All right, so I'm going to kind of walk you through some basics on the bamboo suite, which is for the laser and the cutter. Now, it is new, so I couldn't really find a lot of how to uh, use the program, and I'm just kind of been trying different things and seeing what works. Uh, so when you open it up, this is what will come up, all your projects you've done. Uh, there's some sample projects down here. But you can go up here to New Project, and you click on New Project. And then you can either go over here to Image, and you can import a picture from your saved stuff or from your photos. You can go here to the library, which they have some basic stuff. So I'm just going to do a little example of what you would do. So let's say you want this little bird here. So you click on that, and now right now it's set to laser line. If you don't want laser line, then you would come up here and click it. So this is just going to trace it. This is going to fill it. So there's laser fill, and so then that's what it would look like if you fill it. And then if you wanted to cut it out, there's laser cut. So that would actually cut it all the way through the material. I'm just going to do laser fill right now. Again, we're just kind of making an example. So you go back down to the library. There's all kinds of other stuff if you want to add anything else to go with them. Um, then there's shapes. You can do rectangles, eclipses, three-point arcs, center-point arcs. And then you can come over here. With the pen, you do your dots to make what you want. And you can actually curve it, too. And then once you are done with your design, you will right-click. And that's leaves the design there. So I don't really want those, but just an example of how you use the pin. You can do all kinds of different shapes then with that. And But again, right click gets it to stay. Took me a minute to figure that out. Um, the next thing over here is the text. Uh, so then here you can do a text box. So this is what mostly I've been doing because I'm just engraving uh, words and stuff. So then you just write hi or whatever or your name. So right now, again, you click down in here and then you come up here and you can see it's laser lines. So again, we'll make this really big so people can see it better. This is going to be, it's going to outline the letters. If I go over here to fill it, it's going to fill the letters. And then laser cut, again, we cut the letters out. I prefer laser fill if I'm doing engraving, but that's just me. If you come over here, if you click on the font, you can have all these different types of fonts here that you can go around and uh, play around with. Some would probably look better as filled in and some would look better as uh, just the laser lines. So you can play around. Uh, there's quite a few as you can see. There's even some symbols and stuff in there. So then you just find something that you like. And you can make it, you can change the size, the regular italic, you, some of them you can make bold, sizing of it. And then you can center it if you have multiple words and align it. Make the box bigger, it probably helps. So like if you had Like that, you can center it all on the left side, in the center, and on the right. Weld. So like if the letters are touching, it'll blend them together. So if you're doing something that you're cutting out, you may not want that. All right. Uh, you can also change the spacing on the letters, but again, I haven't really played with that too much. Just mostly been doing basic text. You can even make a QR code. So if you want to um, laser engrave a QR code onto something, like little business cards and stuff, you can generate your QR code and put it in here and all that. I don't really do much with QR codes, so I don't know too much about it. So, oh, I haven't played with this. This is a material calibration. So you would pay, you can choose. So like if you're doing metal, oh, this is changing how many, I don't need that many of them. Just need one. So I'm just doing one. I changed it to metal. You can uh, do your parameter based on speed, scanning interval, 
Uh, that's on the x-axis and the y-axis. I have not played with this too much. Um, there's max values on there. And you can change all the other parameters. I don't I haven't played with it too much because I haven't wanted to uh, change anything in the calibration of the machine because I figure Bamboo knows way more than I do. So now we've got two things here. We've got our text and we've got our little bird. And if we want to put it together, you can just click and highlight both of them. And then down here at the bottom, you can click attach. There's also a merge. And um, there's different ways to put things together. And I haven't played with those. I usually just attach them. That way, if I need to move the bird, I move the letters too. If I need to make them smaller, I can shrink all of it together. But again, you want to get each thing the way you want it before you attach them. That way, if you have to resize something, it's way easier like that. So I'll show you. I've uh, Let's say we just had it really big because we're working on it. We want to see it. We go over here to prepare. And we'll go up here to capture an image. And it takes a minute. It's... Uh, scanning what I have on the build plate down there. So I've got this little metal box. And you can see that my design is way bigger than what I have in there. So then here, I, since they're attached together, I can just grab the box corners and shrink it down to what I want. I can make it taller if I need to. Shrink it a little bit. And then you can just play with it to get whatever you need in there. Now over here you can do rapid measure so it's going to do an automatic measurement of pretty much the middle of what's on your build plate to see the height. So this is what makes it really easy. Um, if you are got basic material you can click on this. The shiny stuff might have an issue doing it. So I did measure it and it was like 16 millimeters so we'll see if it it was very close so it came back and said 15.15 now you notice my design shifted so when you do this or when you put the value in here it will change because the camera adjusts so it can get more accurate so it's saying with this uh, object on there I need to move uh, adjust the camera angle or picture, I guess, the best way to describe it, to make it look more accurate of what it's actually going to do. So it uh, kind of auto adjusts. So that's very close. When I measured it, it was about 15.7, 15.9, depending on what spot I was on, because I'm not great at measuring all this stuff. But you also want to come over here and select your material. Now they have basic uh, stuff that they sell already pre-programmed in here so if you're doing their stuff in here they have their tags they have their iron-on patches um, but you can come down here to new material since this is something that they don't have and you can label it so this is silver box I bought it at Hobby Lobby um, they're on the slats on there and then you can put the thickness in and like I said, mine, I, when I was measuring it was about 15.9 so that's what I'm going to put in there. Select support material, it, or so it's on the 10 watt laser and I'm doing a laser fill because that's what I prefer. So then you can come down here. This is what they auto generated for speed and settings. You can change it um, based on your material and what you want to do. And then once you have it right, again, some of this is kind of trial and error. You can change things and do what you need to do and see if you like it. And then once you have your settings the way you like them, you confirm it. And the big thing is you got to actually go back in here because once you add in material, it takes you out and you think it selected it, but it didn't. And I learned that the hard way. So then you go back over and click on your silver box and then it'll have that stuff in there. Again, you can still do the rapid measure again just to see if it uh, comes back and is accurate. Like I said, I'm just going off of what I measured 
I will say uh, there's a few times I put parameters in that it, it did not like, and then my program pretty much froze and I had to close it out and restart it. And I'm guessing it was just because those measurements weren't anywhere close to accurate or where it should have been. So this thickness this time came out 15.6. All right, so the other way to measure something is targeted measure. So instead of doing the rapid where it scans it, you can say, well, I don't want to engrave here. I'm going to engrave in this spot right here. And I want to know what the height of that is to have the laser adjusted correctly. So you pick what spot and then you come down here and hit measure. And then it will measure from that particular spot, especially if you have an object that is not even or level. So then, that is what I was measuring, which was about 15.9. So that is a lot more accurate. So then you can hit apply, and then it's going to put it over here, and that's what it's going to use. And then from there, you can go to make it. Um, there's also auto arrange, so it'll auto arrange your object on there. Sometimes that works well with your project, sometimes it doesn't. And then there's batch engrave. So if you have multiple objects on there, it's going to try to take the contour of that and match it to other stuff. I've had issues with that just because I've been doing shiny things and it was not tracing them correctly. But it, I think that has a lot to do with the reflection on there with the light in the camera. So that's more probably the material I'm using. I'm going to try it again later with some patches and see how it works. So another thing that you can do on here is mirror an image. So if you're going to print on something like uh, the backside of glass or something like that, or something that you're going to look at it from the other side, you'd want to mirror the image. So you just click the mirror button. All right, so I've added a couple other things to show you. So over here, you can click on the different objects. So we got the tree and the flower. Now it's not happy because it's not the same type. But if you right click on each item, you can either delete it, you can move it to a new plate. So this is just a um, line instead of a fill. So I would probably cut them separately. I don't know that you can do it together. So you make a new plate or you can do a new batch, so a new material. So. Uh, if you're going to do something and you're layering it, you'd probably have a new batch. Um, so you could put it all together and then you can have different materials that you cut different things and put them together. This is why you would use the move to batch. The move to plate is uh, like this where we've got uh, one thing's a fill and one thing's a line. So we just put it on a new plate and then over here you can see you got plate one, plate two. So we go back to plate one. And then this is the same as the other one. So again, I would right click and move it to plate number two. You can do another plate too. So you can have three plates, four plates, whatever you want. So I've got the two things on plate two. And so we cut one, we do a new image, and then we would see where the image is. We would go to number two and make sure that it's not overlapping. Another uh, thing you have that you can do is hit preview down here at the end where it says make and preview. So there's our preview of what it's going to look like. And right now it's only showing us one, uh, plate one. This is just an example of uh, how to use it and all the different options in there. And then again, once you are ready, you would hit make, dash you to send it, and then you would send it, send it to the printer.